So I wanted to make a response video to Chris Warcocky's video on the Nova Hot End and his thoughts and opinions on it. Um, just a little bit about me. My name is Andrew. I am a third party of any of the products or anything like that. I don't have any affiliation with Chris or uh, Nova or um, Slice or anything like that. I am someone who just likes to make things like um, for example, I'm making this Core XY printer here to the left of me. Um, upstairs I work on motorcycles and cars and all kinds of different things. Um, but that's either here nor there. Anyways, um, so I like to try out new things and one of the things that I decided to try out was the Nova Hot End. Um, I now have three of these. This is my third one. Uh, that I just purchased in the last uh, week here so that I could put it on my Core XY so that I could have dual extruders um, and well dual hot ends in general uh, so that way I can print a support filament and a primary filament and um, be able to um, do that without any issues with clogging or speed or anything like that. Um, I decided to get the third one after I bought the first two and I was going to take the first one that I installed off of the ender that I have next to me and put it onto the um, Core XY, but I decided it rather than that, I'd just buy a brand new one and uh, leave the ender as it is and um, go from there. Um, on the other hand, I have had this Magnum since December. Um, well, not this Magnum. I've had a Magnum since December on another printer. Um, it's upstairs from here. And I, I've, th this is the second Magnum that I have. This one's brand new, um, never been used or anything like that. But um, uh, I have it because I'm helping a friend install it on his Ender because I recommended it to him before I went and bought my Nova and tested it out and everything. Um, now, he's got different needs and everything from everyone. Every need is different, and so that's why, um, based on your needs, what you will want for your printer will be different from everyone else. Um, anyways, the um, thing that I wanted to start with in regards to what Chris talked about is um, the cost of the Nova. Um, and for this Nova here, just the Nova itself and a thermistor and a heater cartridge, um, let's just say the 60 watt and the NTC 300, that is $144 for the basic setup with that. And that's really not that bad. If you compare it to a comparable product from E3D, um, such as the Volcano, and you set it up with a similar setup, such as the plated copper, uh, heat block, uh, thermal cartridge of some sort, and a um, little um, heater cartridge that's of decent quality, then uh, it will be far more than what the Nova costs by far more. Uh, it comes out to about 155 before tax and shipping and everything, but after shipping costs and everything is calculated in, it would be about $180 for me to get a Volcano with everything comparable to the Nova from E3D. If I get it from Matter Hackers, it would be about 178 with shipping. Um, but 180 with shipping from E3D, 178 from uh, Matter Hackers after tax and everything. It's only 144 for the Nova with shipping and handling and everything. And that's pretty simple on every case there. Now, let's look at the Mosquito. This Mosquito, with the specs that it currently has, it's got the slice thermistor and the slice heater cartridge um, and the slice nozzle and slice fan. Now, I say that because that's how it is. I'm going from a you do not have a nozzle or hot end or any part set up to start with because that would be fair comparison. You're not going to say 
oh, well, the, you've got this, 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 this. And that's not a fair comparison of price because you already paid for the nozzles and otherwise. Um, and while they are um, vendor locked to Nova, uh, to 3D Passion, um, the reason why is because they have tighter tolerances. If they didn't have those tighter tolerances, it would literally just be another volcano. And at that point, you just buy the volcano. So you vendor lock which some see that as a bad thing. I see that as quality control, which allows us to have higher quality parts in our printers and everything. Um, now, going back to the Mosquito, uh, my Mosquito with everything that I bought for it, the boron nitride, the V-groove mount, the torque wrench that I bought from them, um, heater cartridge nozzle, etc., and the fan, which the fan did not include the full length cable. It just had this little pigtail, nothing more. It didn't even have the other side of this pigtail, unlike the Nova where it allows you to at least just, you know, solder on a connector. Not We're putting a connector on here and we hope that you have this connector so that way you can crimp it on. Um, well, I didn't have those crimps. I didn't have that Molex connector at home. So I had to splice in a different cable which kind of hurt me. Um, now, um, the cost of that cost me $350 with shipping, which that's everything to be functional. And um, in that 350, that's $20 extra for two day shipping, but that's still $330 for everything that you need to get a Mosquito Magnum from them. Now, one thing that he brought up is that the copperhead is cheaper. It's not, technically. If, again, you go from a state of buying everything from Mosquito that you need to have it run, it is $250 for a copperhead with nozzle and everything else that you need for a copperhead. Heat brake, heat sink, uh, heat block, thermistor, heater cartridge, nozzle, and the boron nitrate base, because you still need that because unlike the Nova or even the Volcano, this rotates. And so what they do to make up for the lack of precision there is they give you, or not give you, they make you buy uh, boron nitride paste, which um, I'll get to that a little bit later, but yeah, it, it's the Nova, when you compare it to everything else of its competitors at the quality, it is the cheapest. If you want to start trying to compare it to a uh, E3D volcano like this, which is a clone, of course, you're going to get cheap. It's going to be cheap and it's going to clog. This, the reason I don't use this is because it constantly had clog issues and that's why I bought the Mosquito in the first place. Um, but, um, so there's, um, uh, a, a lot of things like, um, I, I'd rather go with the Nova where you have to solder on some connectors. Like this is 10 bucks. That's not that bad. Meanwhile, a pair of crimpers and possibly the right crimp is 20 bucks minimum. Um, and that's not even including the cable addition to it, but, um, yeah. So that's the cost aspect of the Nova, and I think it's actually pretty fair for the quality, something that everything you can get off the ground, no parts situation, which is how I go when I'm buying a hot end. I'd rather buy the best parts uh, that I can for it rather than going and just buying cheap parts that aren't going to last as long. Um, another point he made is that no tools are included in the package. Now, this is true. Um, you do need a 1.3 millimeter uh, hex bit in order to get the hot end out of the package, but um, that's not really that big of a deal to a degree. Um, he is going to be including them in future packages from 
some uh, constructive criticism that he was given on that and everything. Not just from Chris, but from um, everyone asking why it didn't have a tool to remove it. And um, he may be including uh, some notes as to how to remove it if you guys really feel that it's needed um, in order to get this out. And just as an example, this is a brand new package from him. Um, so let's go ahead and unscrew. It's a 1.3 millimeter on the Allen key here. And then we can remove this nice and easy. Now, I will give you guys some better uh, looks at this up close and personal so that you can see the tooling and stuff like that. Uh, it's not going to be macro shots, but I'm using a Pixel 4 XL for the picture quality and everything. Um, but yeah, but yeah, as far as the tools, he plans to include them in the future. Um, in regards to the special bit that is required to remove the nozzles, I purchased one here just for an example. And um, it is really nice quality. Um, it is finely machined so that the uh, nozzle will fit in there just perfectly and won't have wiggle room so that way you don't shear off any edges on your nozzles or anything like that from bad um, clearances or anything like that which is very nice for like brass nozzles for example that are a lot softer of a metal um, but if you don't want to use that you can use an open-ended six millimeter wrench by technicality it does fit um, you don't have to use a crescent wrench like he said in that video um, the six millimeter wrench if you really don't want to get his specialty tool um, now in, in regards to some constructive criticism and everything um, I did comment on this being aluminum rather than uh, being steel or something like that where it would actually be able to be magnetic um, in the future versions since there is enough want of them this was just the initial run of the tools, so um, the next run will actually be magnetic and be able to stay in the hot end, or not the hot end, in your bit driver and otherwise, which is some constructive criticism that he has implemented, so that way in the future it will be better. Um, if you have thoughts and things like that, that um, you have questions, you can feel free to ask Vlad. He's very open about his uh, system there and questions and pointing you in the right direction towards what uh, he would recommend to you in your situation. He's not just going to recommend you a Nova just to recommend you a Nova. If you're on a low budget, he might recommend you uh, E3D. If you want one-handed tool change, he would recommend you a Mosquito. Um, but it all depends on your situation and what you're looking to get. He's really pretty all right guy from the chat that I've had with him and I think that there's a lot of misinformation out there from a few people who are just trying to paint him as a bad guy for whatever reason they don't like him. Um, in um, regards to that, uh, Chris tried to say that Vlad attacked people and um, whenever they criticized him he blocked them well, that's simply not true. Um, from what I've read on the forums is that Vlad would go and um, try to make statements about things and then he would be attacked about his hot end or about what he's doing and things like that. For example, with the Kickstarter that was brought up, uh, Vlad was trying to state that it's unfair for Slice to state that they have the most thermally advanced hot end without prior testing to compare it to other hot ends, which they haven't really tested it to our knowledge um, to 
as far as I know, there aren't really anyone who's done thermal testing. And if you have done thermal testing, there's a lot of questions as to how, um, because if you take a heat gun to, or not a heat gun, but a, like a fluke or not a fluke, um, one of those special uh, guns that shows you the thermals of the outside of the um, object that you're trying to see the heat of, well, you're only going to get the outside heat. You're not going to see what the in, inner bore is, where the filament path is, and everything, which is completely different. Um, you're, if you, for example, do the way that Chris did it and shove a thermistor down the uh, bore, well, here's the thing. Filament has heat creep that goes up the filament because filament still does conduct heat and it travels through the filament. If you just shove a thermistor down there, you're checking the temperature of air effectively, which that it, it's all right. It, it's close, but it's not the most accurate test. The one way that I could really think of that you could really test it is you can run hot ends without fans at like 230 degrees Celsius or something like that and see which one clogs before the rest or which one clogs last I should say because that will show that it's more thermally advanced than the others because it's able to dissipate the heat without the need of a fan that is thermally advanced in regards to the heat sink. Um, but, um, and so Slice just kind of dismissed it. They didn't really, from what I read, care to test it against the Nova or the E3D or anything like that. Um, so I'm going to test the Mosquito Magnum against the Nova on the flow rate and see which one clogs first without a fan. And uh, run them, like I said, at like 230 degrees Celsius and see if I, which one clogs or whatever. Um, in regards to the claims of being uncloggable on the Nova Hot End, I haven't had mine clog yet and I've had a uh, thing happen where the uh, heatsink fan of the uh, printer ended up getting disconnected at the board end and so it had no fan and I was printing at 260 degrees Celsius and it didn't skip a beat, it didn't clog, it didn't have any issues with that. Um, but yeah, it, it's here and there, I, I don't know. Um, I haven't had any issues with the Mosquito since I started to use it. Um, now, um, one uh, gripe I had in regards to clogging and everything is uh, my Mosquito, one like this, um, it had issues with clogging because uh, when I was printing it would retract up into the heat break and here's the thing, um, if it retracts up too high up in there it gets clogged really easy and I ended up having things happen but um, yeah it, it it's more likely to clog than I've seen for the Nova I haven't had any issues with that which is one big positive I can say on that front um, but let me flip you guys around and I'm gonna show you some stuff now here's the Nova hot end I've already kind of gotten fingerprints on it and like five seconds but um yeah this is a polished hot end and what he was showing is not really any big imperfections that's just again fingerprints um as you can see just rubbing on it with a shirt a little bit was able to get that to go away but um yeah mostly i just covered this with the fingerprints but it, it's a very 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 beautiful hot end 
it is nickel plated chrome copper and then it's chrome plated on top of the nickel um, I went ahead and I got the anodized titanium heat break that was a little bit special uh, on this one to give that a try make it a little bit different from the other two and on top of that I went and bought two of these other nozzles one is a star forged at 0.5 and the other one is a brass at 0.33 um, but yeah it is all very finely made and very very shiny as you can see here um, now let's see here so there's the inside of the bore there um, as you can see, the inside of that is WS2 coated. That is a high temperature nonstick coating similar to like a high temperature uh, Teflon, but it can withstand up to 500C plus, so it's not going to have issues with that. Um, let me go ahead and remove this little set screw here and I will show you more about that. Now, I know this is hard to see here on the tip, but that is a tiny little bit of brass there. Now, that brass is there so that when you set it into the hot end here, um, it does not hurt the titanium, which, as you can see here, the titanium is really nice. Um, this is all checked by hand and everything by Vlad, so that's kind of nice. Um, let's see here, can I, no, I'm not going to be able to unscrew that. Now, one thing that he tried to show in his, um, little video, let me remove these, uh, two little screws here. is I won't be needing these two screws because I'm going to be running in a direct drive setup. Now, just as a reference, this is an ASA print in a very, very um, humid room. It's about 80% humidity in here. So that's why it's got like bubbles and stuff like that. Um, just as an example, but it is actually fairly well done. Um, no issues with warping or anything like that. Here's a, another print that I did. Same thing as that one there. It is also part of this, which again, bubbles mostly. Not anything that's the fault of the hot end. I need to um, get a dehumidifier so that way um, I don't have that issue anymore. This is just a little spool holder. Um, anyways, back to this. Um, sorry about the gnats. It's been fairly wet, causing issues with them. But this is a push fit, which means if you push on it in a direction other than straight, it is not going to go in there. And on top of that, it requires a small amount of pressure to actually seat in there. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and take this little piece of threading so I need to put that on there so that way I can adjust this um, but again, yeah, the tooling on this is very, very, very fine. 
it is very, very tight fit. Um, that is so that way it can actually transfer the heat over to the hot end properly and everything. And this little hole here that he made a comment on is done that way without a flat. So that way you have some adjustability in situations like what I'm doing with a dual hot end of being able to adjust the tip. It gives you a little bit of adjustability there, which is really nice. Um, now, if we compare it to the Mosquito here, and yes, it is uh, pretty. This is cro the nickel plated, and there's the slice engineering end, and as you can see, slice and patent pending, 1.75, um, but yeah. This is um, not very precision engineered. It is made to work with the boron nitride. Without that, this would be heating up air pockets around the bore here rather than actually conducting properly on the thermals. Um, now, uh, again, the tight tolerances allow him to be more specific about his things and everything, which um, if he didn't have those tolerances, it would be just another mosquito or another volcano or otherwise, uh, because it would not be able to conduct the heat out of the heat block um, over to the nozzle as effectively. Um, it relies on those tight tolerances to transfer the heat away from the heater cartridge and to the nozzle faster than you can with the volcano or the mosquito there because it has better conductivity of the heat. Um, in regards to that, the um, we'll look at the mosquito. You have to use boron nitrate paste. Um, on their website, it says that their nitrate paste has 31 watts per meter Kelvin of efficiency um, and if you compare that even to aluminum which is 167 watts of efficiency which means this is better at transferring heat to the uh, nozzle than the mosquito is um, to the heat block um, but that that from there on you're, you're being limited by the weakest link if you can only transfer 31 watts per meter Kelvin over to the heat block, then you're going to have the inefficiency of 31 watts while you have a heat block that can transfer 399, which is the thermal transfer of copper, um, which that's what Nova has, is copper. So you get a thermal transfer rate of 399 watts on the uh, surfaces that are able to contact and it is very tight tolerances in that. Um, yes, it is smaller, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. If you can get a equal or higher flow with a smaller size, what's the bad side to that? I personally don't see one. Um, now, one point that uh, he tried to make in regards to that was that the mosquito is bigger than, or sorry, not the mosquito is bigger, the Nova is bigger than the mosquito. Well, I'll tell you this, if you put them side by side, top to top, the mosquito is about three millimeters bigger. It's a, like 48 millimeters total length. The Nova is only 45. The uh, heat zone of the uh, Nova is about equivalent to the entirety of the heat block on the Mosquito plus this little ceramic or whatever insulator, not including the nozzle. If you include the nozzle, then you have an additional couple millimeters of length. Now, if you want to compare the heat sink 
to the length of the Nova? Well, I'll tell you this. The Mosquito's heatsink is also longer than the uh, Nova. Now, if you start comparing the depth, on the other hand, um, it, it would be pretty close there. Let's uh, just go ahead and take this uh, fan carriage out here and put that on. Yeah, so it wins a little bit on the depth area, but it loses on the height, which for most people, height is the bigger factor than depth because you're already having to deal with the width and everything with the factor of the uh, direct drive or however you're choosing to extrude. Um, so yeah, it, it, the Mosquito is far from being thermally efficient. It's not something that they really thought about, um, I think, is the factor that the boron is being a limiting factor in their efficiency there. And honestly, the clamp style would have been better to go about that. And um, one other gripe I have with the Mosquito here is the way that the melt zone works is it works off of radiant heat. Rather than be having the melt zone be uh, parallel to the uh, heat melt zone, you have it going perpendicular, which means that it's relying on heat creep going up this in order for it to actually function as a melt zone, as well as this is also, um, well, that's on any hot end, but you, you effectively only have the direction that's directly adjacent to it that's actually functioning as equivalent melt zone before it becomes radiant, which is why the volcano works as well as it does is because it is adjacent to the melt zone, which makes it more evenly heated throughout the filament, causing less trouble uh, with clogs and other things, as long as you buy the quality ones. I cannot say the Chinese ones are good. Um, my experience with them is very bad. Um, but yeah, that's my biggest gripe with the Mosquito is it has radiant heat creep that they did not think about um, in designing the Magnum. And um, it has caused me to get clogs up in the throat past where the melt zone is supposed to be. And I've had to tear it apart completely. Um, I've had issues with the little insulator block completely breaking mid print after um, something happened. I'm not sure exactly what. I came back and it was shattered. Um, thankfully, Slice had great customer support and they hooked me up with a replacement and I am very grateful for that. Um, I can definitely say they have great customer support. Um, I don't know about E3D's customer support, haven't had to deal with them yet. Um, and I can also say that Nova has good support. Vlad's been great with any questions I've had about his hot end or anything like that. Um, but yeah, uh, tight tolerances are what really makes or breaks it when it comes to the thermal transfer. And that is something that helps with the heat speed and things like that and helps with uh, being able to print faster. Um, but, um, yeah. Um, it, let's kind of wrap this up a little bit. I will say that um, if you want something that is quality, it's generally not going to be cheap. Um, if it's cheap quality, then it's, it's that um, three iron rules. Y you can only have like two somewhat of something. You can never have all three. Um, but for what it is, the Nova is fairly cheap uh, compared to the competitors out there. Um, but if you just want something super cheap and your budget's like, let's say $50, 
I'm going to personally say, go get you a V6, a V6 clone of some sort. Um, it will serve you well. Just replace the heat break is my recommendation with a quality one and it should do you well. Also, don't skimp out on the nozzles. Um, everyone just seems to get the dollar bin nozzles and I don't know, I've never had good luck with them. And that's why I bought the Slice Engineering one. I thought I'd give it a try and see if it had any issues. I never had a clog with it in the nozzle itself. Um, in regards to if you want something that you can easily change over the tool head, um, then I would recommend you to get the Mosquito. It's got the one-handed tool change function. That's something that is really nice about it. Um, but if you want something that is high quality machined, fairly decent on the price, and is really hard to clog and can possibly help you with your speed going up a bit, then take a look at the Nova. Consider if it's for you. And uh, if you have questions, you can ask me, you can ask anyone who owns a Nova for the most part, we're a fairly nice community and open to questions. Um, and um, just try to stay away from the misinformation out there. Um, I know that there's a lot of things saying this, that, and the other, and it's shady and whatnot, but I I'm just trying to give personal opinions and thoughts and the facts that I have found uh, about the hot end. Um, like for example, it's got a high flow rate of 47 meters per second cubed. I don't know if it can reach that speed yet. I will test that later um, against the Mosquito and um, I will be posting that video as well as speed tests and many other things. If you guys have something that you want me to try, I will do my best in order to uh, try filaments or whatever you have questions about. Um, I got TPU, ASA, um, HIPS, uh, I don't really get ABS, or uh, not ABS, um, PLA anymore because I'm able to print a SA uh, on these Wham Bam sheets. I can honestly say the Wham Bam has made printing high temperature filaments much easier. Um, Definitely recommend a PEI or PEX sheet of some sort. Um, both are phenomenal for helping with the bed adherence if you're doing more than just PLA. Uh, if you just want to do PLA, then stick with glass. It's cheap, affordable. Um, but yeah, everything has different volumetric flow rates. I'm going to be testing those. Um, I'm going to be tinkering around with this Core XY here, which, as you can see, it has this moon stepper here. There will be two, one right here, and then one right here. Here's my other Nova. So I'll have two, and I have to get another BMG so that way I can put that on there and... Uh, it's going to be running on Duet. The Ender is running on SKR and linear rails on the X and Z. That helps out a lot with it. Um, sorry about the awkward angles. Uh, I'm functioning off a phone and yeah. But um, lots of things vary when it comes down to speed. Um, you can get a Nova and it will assist you with getting up to the speed that you want to do. Uh, nowhere does it say that you will get 400 millimeters per second with the Nova just right off the bat. Um, there's lots of requirements to be able to print fast and it's not something where it is just like there. That's the one thing that you need to print 400 millimeters. A second. It's something where the flow of the hot end will allow you to print faster without issues compared to other hot ends. Um, and so I'm going to be putting the speeds to the test. 
Um, I can tell you personally on the Ender here, the speeds that I have tested is uh, 200 millimeters per second for my top speed with my acceleration being set at 5,000 and my jerk being set at 25. Now, the reason why the jerk is so low compared to what it possibly could be is the bed movement. Um, the bed movement causes lots of ringing issues and so to tone that down, I lowered the jerk down to 25. I had it at 50, but I just had too much ringing uh, to make it workable or nice. Um, but I've done, I started with 2500 Excel and uh, 25 jerk, tried to go to 5000 Excel and 50 jerk, failed, lowered the jerk down to 25 and it was able to print beautifully again. Um, and again, these are printed at that speed um, without really any issues that are visible to me. That's uh, nice and flat. And yeah, the only issues that I've had is from bubbly filament from it being hydro hydroscopic or hygroscopic. Um, and I will be making a video later this week. Tune in.